Hey guys, Joe at Small Home Upgrade Prepping. Welcome to the channel. So yeah, I know I've been gone a couple weeks. I haven't made a video for about two weeks, I think it's been. But you guys see what I've been working on. I've actually spent the last couple of weeks putting together the entire solar system here. Um, that's what we're going to really be covering today. I'm going to be showing you the panels, how I secure the panels to the roof. And this is my shed roof. You can see where that antenna is over here in the corner of it. Um, this is over 12 feet high. It's been quite a quite a fun journey doing all this, but I did enjoy it. But it's been quite difficult working on a metal roof over here. Um, with the kind of pitch that this thing has and putting these panels up But uh, I'm going to show you guys how we did it how I wired everything up. I custom made my own wires I bought a hundred foot of uh, wire black and red uh, PV wire and I put my own connectors on and all that ran them in the shed. I did finally find my um, Split phase inverter that I've been looking for and if you guys follow this channel Then you know that I've been looking for a while I did order one at one point and it became discontinued I guess and I'm actually thrilled now because the one I found is incredible. It's a 6,000 watt split phase um, it's just incredible. We're going to be getting into that, show you that, the charge controller, how everything's working. I've actually had this thing so far. It's still in progress. I'm still working on things. You see the panels are up over here um, and all that. But I have actually had this thing powered up to the point where I was pulling uh, 111 amps on this thing. I mean, it was, it was kind, of, kind of crazy. But it's actually set up for over 500 amps. And the wiring, which again, I'll show you, I use all 300 amp wire. Because keep in mind, my full load, I've oversized this, that my full load... Um, I'm literally only pulling, um, I've been, I've ran this quite a bit actually under full load. I've ran my air conditioner already. I've ran everything. And I think the max I went up to is about 77 amps, um, somewhere in that area as far as DC amps go. And it was only pulling about maybe seven amps on the AC side. So, um, like I said, guys, that's what I'm going to be getting into. This is a little different because I've been working on this for the last couple weeks. So, um, we kind of have a lot of different filming that's getting edited together and pieced together over here. Some I'll be doing voiceover and some I'll be talking to you. Um, when I had six panels up, you guys will see I dig it up on the roof and um, start filming a bunch of things, showing you guys exactly you know how I usually uh, anchor this into the roof and used four and a half inch brass lag bolts and went directly through the pressure treated two by fours that I used underneath this. Um, and you can even see where the panels join together. I painted the two by fours brown so they blend into the roof, but used four and a half inch lag bolts, like I said, and went directly through the two by four on the top of this roof here, through the roof and down into the rafters and secured it. I mean, these things are just solid. So. Um, so like I said guys, I'm going to be showing you guys how we did all this. So yeah, this is uh, one I bought, I think they were like, I don't know, maybe eight feet long, one and a half by one and a half aluminum angle uh, here. This is what I used to anchor them, but uh, I didn't use it like this over here. What I did is, let me grab the other piece real quick and show you how I did this. And then we're going to show you actually, um, my wife filmed me as I was cutting this and doing all this. So we're going to show you. So yeah, you, you see here, I took this to the table saw and actually ripped this down into two pieces. I ripped the angle here and split it right along over here and ripped it down into two pieces. And then I ground this end over here. You see, I didn't grind this down over here. Um, the sides were because I did the entire side. That's my last cut. There's no point because this is extra. I'm not using it anymore. But the other ones I did grind all this down, make it nice and smooth. And you see on the edges over here uh, where I made the cut, this is the side that's cut. You can tell a little bit, but it's completely smooth. I can rub my finger on it and all that. So um, we're going to show you that because, like I said, we filmed, my wife filmed me doing all that. Okay, so now I'm cutting the metal on the table saw here. And I'll tell you guys, if you're not experienced with cutting aluminum or cutting metal, I really wouldn't suggest that you guys do this. A lot can go wrong when cutting metal. Um, I used to own an aluminum company years ago. We manufactured hurricane shutters. We built the big screen rooms that go around pools and installed windows. So I have a lot of experience cutting aluminum. Um, so, But this is what I did. I took the angle and I ripped it down on my table saw to get two pieces out of it. And you definitely want to think of safety if you do do this. You can see how I stopped the blade before I pull that out. Okay, so here, um, here I'm cutting the pieces that I just ripped down. These are just the flat pieces now. And as you see, I've put a board over the aluminum. Um, you don't want to use your hand to do that. The aluminum can catch on the blade. Will quick, real, real quick. Uh, it'll kick real quick, and it will literally tear your hand apart. I've had that happen to my employees when we had our aluminum company. So now I'm just taking a file. I'm filing down the edge over here to clean it up and make sure it's not sharp to get all the rough burrs off and kind of round that off a little bit so it doesn't cut me. But like I was saying, you definitely always want to think safety with this. I was wearing my goggles. You see, I'm wearing a glove on the hand in case my hand, you know, smacks against the sharp edge. Um, and like I said, putting the board over that piece of aluminum when you're using the chop saw to cut it. 
especially as the pieces get smaller. Um, like I said, that's a good, that's a good idea because I've seen a lot of people get hurt real bad by doing that. So yeah, now we're just finishing cleaning up the edge over here on it. And then, like I said, these were all cut to two inch pieces. They're an inch and a half wide and then two inches. The flange on the panel is one inch and then it's stuck out one inch. So as you see here again, I'm putting the metal down. All right, so now I'm showing, I put some tape because you see how the metal will slide into that little channel there. But I put a little bit of tape over there to pull it up onto the guide. And I'm putting the board back over it and marking, checking my mark, making sure it's good, and then just cutting it. But like I said, if you're just using your hand to hold a piece of aluminum like this, there's a really good chance it's going to kick on you and it will rip you apart. So now I've cut that little two inch piece that we have here and I'm going to cut a bunch of those. I needed eight panels, four in each panel, so we needed 32 of those. And we're going to clean up the edge on that as well. And next, once we get done with this part here and I have them all filed down, now you see here where I marked them off on the panel and I drilled the holes in them. And they go in there, I put a washer on the inside. And I used a lock nut. I'm not sure if I show you guys here. I think I do. Yeah, you see the lock nut has a little plastic inside of there, a little nylon. Um, that keeps the nut from backing off. Once it's torqued down, it's torqued nice and tight. So like I said, there's four of these per panel. Um, so I had to assemble 32 of these. It's a little tight working area there. I found it much, much easier if you actually get the nut lined up and then put the bolt in. So now we just torque that down. We just took a ratchet and used a pair of pliers on the other side, a pair of channel locks to hold the other side in place and just torque that down nice and tight. And there it is. And you see here's the back of the controller on the panel. That's how it gets wired into the panel itself. Okay, so this is how you make the wires. This obviously is the positive. It's red, and this is photovoltaic wire is what it's called. So I didn't show you how to strip it. You guys know how to strip it, I'm sure. So you just give it a little twist, twist it nice and tight like this here. And these connectors are different. You see these two are different over here. Well, these are also different. Okay, this is a male, this is a female, and this one is made to go inside of that like that, which means this one here goes with this connector, and this one here goes with this one. So what you do is first... You take off the screw over here and you pull the seal out. Um, this isn't super, super necessary. These will fit on after, but if you're an electrician, you get in the habit of doing things like this here. So then you just slide the seal and the nut right back over this here. Okay. So you just take this here and you put this in here and it can slide a little bit into the hole right like that over there. Okay. So you bring this down to the insulation right over here. Now they do make a tool for this if you want to go spend $60, but like I said, I'm going to teach you an old electrician's trick here. These things are magic. These, these are made by Klein. We call them our Kleins. They're actually lines and pliers. So all you're going to do is you're just going to take this over here and you're just going to take the corner of your pliers right over here and you're just going to give this a nice little snug down just like that right there. Okay. And then you come back to this side right over here and you do the same thing. You give it a nice little snug just like that right over there. Now, you see this here? This is a universal crimping tool from Klein. So what you do is now you're going to take this and you're going to put this and you're going to make sure that this tab here goes right on this piece here, okay? So you just hold that like that and you look and you make sure. Did you see how I was off over there? Um, if I was off, I would have crushed this. You want to be careful not to crush this part. So then you just give this a nice snug just like that there and you have a perfect crimp. This thing is in solid and it's perfect. So now all you're going to do is this piece here will slide into this backwards into this here and so you feel a little click just like that there's a little click then you put the seal in bin back in like that you take this and screw this on just like this here until it snugs down and then you take this tool over here okay and this goes in like this here and this one goes on the wire over here and then all you do is you just twist just like that until you hear a click just like that. It's perfectly tight. And you have a solid connection right there. And that's it. That's how you make your wire. I bought 100 feet of this. And uh, like I said, now I got to do the black one over here. So black one is going to be basically the same thing. I'm just going to take this off over here. Okay, so first, just like the other one, I'm going to slide my nut on right over here. Then I'm going to put my seal on just like that there. 
I'll wire back up a little bit. Now this you have to be a little bit more careful. This actually might be a touch long. The way I do that to make sure is remember male and female, okay? If I push the wire in here too far up, when I try to push this in, it's gonna hit. So what I do is I actually put one in just like that there so I know where my end is. And I take this and I slide this in just like that. And it actually came out just perfect. It's actually just, I felt a touch. So we're just gonna take our clines and just give this a little snug like we did the other one with a corner. Just like this here. And crimp that down. Same thing on this one. We're gonna crimp that down. Just like that there. Then again, we take our universal crimper. Oh, this one didn't come out really. There we go. Okay. All right, so now we're going to take our universal crimper. All right, so remember, we did the other one. We have this universal crimper that Klein puts on their tools there. We usually use them for barrel connections for connecting ground wires most of the time. So again, just make sure that this is in the circle. If this is off either way, you're going to crush this part here. And just kind of give that a nice little snug down just like that. Okay, so now you're just going to put this in here, same thing, okay, you're going to feel a little click, just like that, you probably heard the click, and you just get the seal, that one in, sometimes they're a little bit stubborn, so then again, you just take this, screw this on, like so, and you take your tool again, here, this here, and again, tighten until it clicks. Think that is done. So now you're not done yet. Okay. Now we have our wires put together. These are nice and solid. So now though you want to test your work. Okay. Especially when you're doing solar, you always want to check yourself and test your work. So now we're going to take these two wires that we just made and we're going to put them together and make sure they snap in nice just like they did there. But now we're going to ohm them. Okay. And we're going to check if we have any resistance or what our connections are and make sure that we build good wires here. So you don't want to put these all up on your roof and then realize that you didn't. So we're going to set this for our ohm meter, which we're checking a resistance continuity here. So as you see here, it's zeroed out. And when we put the leads together, mine zeroes out. This is adjustable. I lost the book a long time ago, but it is, you know, zero, zero, zero point four. So I know what that is. So now I'm just going to check each end of my wire. Okay. I'm going to take this one in here and just kind of put it in there and hold that. And then I'm going to take this red wire over here and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to put it right in the end. And as you see here, this is perfect. 0, 0, 0, 0.5. There's pretty well no resistance on there, and I have 100% continuity. So I know my connections are good before I go and put this up. So that's how you guys build the wires. But like I said, always when you're doing something like this, check yourself every step of the way. Even though I know I have good continuity on these wires here, once I connect into the panel, now I'm going to check the voltage and make sure that I am getting the panels are putting out about 20 volts and make sure that I am getting 20 volts coming out of this thing. So I know my wires are good. So that's how you build the wires. Okay, so I've plugged the wires into my panel now. Um, we know these wires are good. We know we have good continuity, but like I said, check yourself every step of the way. So now I'm going to check my voltage and see what we have. It should be around 19, 20, somewhere in that area. Okay, so yeah, we uh, it's getting a little bit late. Sun's going down, but you see we're still reading 18 volts. Um, that's good. My wires are good. So again, check yourself every step of the way if you're doing this. And you see, all I did is I just jabbed the ends of my meter into these wires over here. I'm not ready to cut these and splice them yet. These are going inside. I'll be using different connections. I'm actually going to join four panels and then four panels together here and then run them off of a, a higher feeder wire here. But anyways, this is how I check my voltage. I just actually jab these right into the end here so I got a good connection. So that's what this all looks like from the ground. Like I said, I wanted to stop uh, before I put up the last two panels just to show you guys exactly what I did, how I bolted down the rails um, with the lag bolts and all that. But this is pretty. This is what it looks like from the ground over here. All right, so now we're up on the roof of the shed over here. You guys saw the down pictures from the ground up here, how it looks. But I'm going to get up real close here and kind of show you a little bit how I did this. Um, like I said, I used pressure-treated 2x4s over here. And you see right over here, 
we have a four and a half inch lag bolt um, brass lag that actually went through this 2x4 through the roof and down into the rafter of the framing of the shed itself and I have a bunch of those all the way along and you guys saw the clips I made so these are how the clips worked out you can probably see this one a little bit probably Okay, yeah, so you see where the clips are in, how I bolted the clips down and screwed them into the um, 2x4s. The 2x4s actually have six lags each, four and a half inches, so there's 24 lags holding all these boards down. Um, one thing I think I am going to come back and do a little bit different, these are really good wood screws. They're an inch and a half long, and there's four of them per panel, but I think I'm going to upgrade those a little bit, make them a little bit thicker down the road. Right now, they're fine. And you see how I painted the, anywhere where you can see uh, from the ground, I painted so you can't you don't see that yellow looking wood that always bothers me when people leave that and put solar panels on that yellow looking wood it kind of gives it a chintzy look so i painted everything and you see here the wires don't have to be in pipe they are pvc coated they are rated to be outside um they're uh, sun resistant and all that the thing is though is from a certain area down on the ground i could see not the black but the red so i decided to go ahead and pipe these and i painted the pipe to match the roof and you see where i put the um clamps down where i strapped these things down into my roof over here so it wasn't necessary, but I did that for cosmetics. And you see how secure all this is. This is not going anywhere. These panels are locked into these boards. These boards are locked down. Like I said, there's a total of 24 lag bolts holding these things down here. Yeah, and you see these pieces of uh, plywood. This actually has nothing to do with anything. That's um, this plywood you guys keep seeing. This. Those are actually spacers. Um, those are up there because when I put the panels up, the top panels, not the bottom ones, those are half inch um, each, and I have a one inch gap around the sides of the panels. So I also wanted the um, gap to be the same where the panels, you know, go above and below each other. So I'm using those as spacers over there. Um, and like I was saying, these screws, I'm probably going to change over. I'm not quite sure. I was thinking about that. They're, they're quite secure, but um, I don't know. My wife says I hurricane proof everything 10 times over, so I'm thinking about maybe upgrading these screws a little bit here. But they're pretty solid, these panels. I mean, they're not going anywhere between 24 lag bolts and each panel being screwed in with four wood screws like that. Um, exterior screws, of course, when you're using screws for anything outside, especially in pressure treated wood that's wet, you have to make sure you're using exterior coated screws, otherwise they'll rust out on you. So, um, but yeah, you guys are seeing how um, I put this in. We put the boards down. There's a lot of measuring on this. There's a lot of, um, I did this by myself. So dragging all this up on the roof, the pitch on the roof is uh, over a 612. It's closer to a 712 pitch. I had to tie myself off in certain things. Once I had the boards up, I could um, support myself on the boards and panels and stuff like that. But this was quite a task. That's why it took me for so long to get all this done over here. But you guys see how this is coming out. Um, you see how I put the wires together and did all that. There's going to be more videos. I can't do this all in one video. You see this one is getting a little bit long here. Um, this is a kind of a voiceover as well here, but you see I connected the wires together. They just snap in together like that, and again, they're all PVC coated. But um, you guys want to see the rest of the videos. There's a 6,000 watt inverter connected to this. Um, there's a 6,000, actually over 101 amp hours a piece. If I remember off the top of my head, that's 1,212 watts times 5, uh, 6,060 watts. Um, battery bank on this thing here, and you see all the wires that I used. There's a really, really cool split phase inverter that I finally did find um, that's just powering up the entire house and everything like that. So the next videos that are going to be coming out, we're um, going to go through the electronics, the split phase inverter, the charge controller, the wiring of the batteries. We're going to check a lot of voltages. So if you guys want to see, you know, the rest of all this, this is the panel install here. But if you guys want to see the rest of all this, um, go ahead and subscribe, hit the notification button. If you guys like what you're seeing, go ahead and like these videos here. That definitely helps to support our channel. And um, then, like I said, we're going to be getting into a couple more videos from here on all this, including how I'm going to connect this to the house the same way that my generator connects to the house. It's kind of a solar generator. Um, that's why it's off-grid. It's not going to be connected to my panel full-time, uh, my electric panel. It's going to be made to connect the same exact way my generator does. When I want to use this, power's out, I can plug my solar into that. So like I said, guys, uh, there's a couple more videos coming out. You see what we got going here. I really, really love the system. It's working fantastic. Um, so far, I've actually had it powered up to 111 amps, and it's just working great. So we'll see you guys on the next one.